Good morning. It is a cool, looks like it rained last night, morning. It's supposed to rain later today. The sun, the dawn is about to break on um, Easter morning. And so, welcome. I just wanted to take a few minutes this morning uh, as we witness the sunrise to read a little bit of scripture and share a couple of thoughts before proceeding into our busy Easter day. Uh, more busy for some folks than others under this lockdown, under these lockdown conditions. But yeah, it's, uh, it's Easter morning. So this morning I want to share from Luke's account, uh, Luke chapter 24, verses 1 through 12. Luke chapter 24, verses 1 through 12. But on the first day of the week, early at early dawn, they went to the tomb, taking the spices they had prepared. And they found the stone rolled away from the tomb. But when they, but when they went in, they did not find the body of the Lord Jesus. While they were perplexed about this, Behold, two men stood by them in dazzling apparel. And as they were frightened, they bowed their faces to the ground. The men said to them, Why do you seek the living among the dead? He is not here, but has risen. Remember how he told you while he was still in Galilee that the Son of Man must be delivered into the hands of sinful men and be crucified, and on the third day rise. And they remembered his words, and returned from the tomb. They told all of these things to the eleven, and to the rest, and to all the rest. Now it was Mary Magdalene, and Joanna, and Mary the mother of James, and the other women with them, who told these things to the apostles. But these words seemed like an idle tale, and they did not believe them. But Peter rose and ran to the tomb. Stooping in, stooping and looking in, he saw the linen cloths by themselves, and he went home marveling at what had happened. Let's just take a few minutes and pray, and then I'll share some thoughts. Father, thank you for this glorious day. Thank you that though it is cloudy outside, we, we do get to see glimpses of the sunrise on this Easter morning. Father, um, thank you for the fact that Jesus rose from the dead. Father, there's so much hope in that for us. Hope that he is who he said he is. Assurance and confidence that we can have salvation in his name alone. Father, no other person who has made a claim to be, uh, to be a God has ever rose from the dead. But Father, your son, Jesus Christ, has risen, and that's what we celebrate this morning. Please bless our time in these next few moments together. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, a few things to observe in this passage. Uh, why did they go early in the morning? Well, in Jewish cu culture and Jewish custom, you cannot work on the Sabbath day, right? And so if you remember from the crucifixion of Jesus, they rushed around to get him into the tomb and to close the roll the stone in front of the tomb before the Sabbath day began. And so now they've had to wait basically from sundown, right, on Friday, until sun up on Sunday to do anything with the body. And and as I've told you before, Jewish custom was is that when someone died, you put them in a tomb and you basically waited a year for their body to decay and then you collected the bones and would often put those in a box called an ossuary box and then bury those underground. And so uh, this was kind of the first step of Jesus, uh, Jesus uh, burial, right? As he's going to be placed in a tomb for the decomp decomposition process. And so uh, been, having gone to Israel and seeing lots of tombs, they're not completely sealed, right? They're, they're, they're open to the air to allow that decom decomposition process to happen. And that decomposition process, can we just say, can we be blunt? It stinks. When a body decomposes, it doesn't smell nice. And so typically, 
before or you know right at the burial the body is prepared with spices to kind of take away such a offending odor during the decomposition process so probably a lot of reasons they went early in the morning I, I thought of a few first of all as I just mentioned they had to wait for the Sabbath day to be over it was their first opportunity on sunrise on Sunday to go and to uh, to anoint Jesus body uh, they, they remember these women had witnessed where Jesus had bo body had been buried right after the crucifixion they, they were the witnesses the scripture clearly tells us that they saw the tomb uh, what we see in this passage is that they were clearly anticipating Jesus' body to be there. Uh, they had prepared the, the, the spices, right, to anoint the body. That was no small thing. That took some preparation. And then they also were perplexed when they didn't find the body. So, so clearly they were expecting to arrive at the tomb to figure out some way to roll that stone away and to anoint Jesus' body with spices. Now, since they were not from Jerusalem, um, they were Galileans, they probably were staying with friends, staying with acquaintances, followers of Jesus. And so they weren't staying in their own sleeping quarters. And I don't know about you, but I don't sleep too well when I'm not in my own bed in my own house. And so probably that's another reason they, they got up early. They just were, were not in their normal place. They were probably just racked with sorrow, right? They were just probably uh, terribly grieved at what had just happened to this to this leader of theirs that they had been following. And they were probably questioning all kinds of things, like, what do we do with our lives now? Uh, we've been following this man, and now he's, he claimed to be the Messiah, the one that was going to rescue Israel, right, and set up his kingdom, and he's gone. So they were probably fill, filled with sorrow, and that probably does not promote good sleep, right? Finally, they were probably anxious about being identified with Jesus, right? Uh, what happened to Jesus and, and Jesus' reputation in Jerusalem at the time probably was not good. He had just been he had just been tried and convicted and crucified, mocked and spit upon. The crowds called for him to be crucified. And so perhaps another reason to go early in the morning is just to, to get the job done before the city wakes up. Right? And and so they their their names are not identified or their their faces are not identified with uh, what many probably consider to be a rebel, right? Uh, an insurrectionist of some type. Their expectation that day was to anoint Jesus' body with spices. This was probably done not just to uh, kill the offending odor so it doesn't, during the decomposition process, but probably to honor their friend, right? to honor the, the one that they've been following these years. But they arrive at the tomb, they go in, they're perplexed that he's not there, and then they find the reality, an empty tomb, two messengers in the tomb. They were frightened, and these two men share their message. He is risen. He's not here. He's risen. These men remind they have to take the time to remind the ladies of what Jesus has said. They immediately go back and tell the apostles everything that's going on. The apostles don't believe them. Now, again, I'm, I'm a little bit uh, uh, speculating here, but I'm guessing that back in those days that uh, when some ladies came in and said some something that didn't, just seemed too good to be true, that they probably... As men probably said, eh, he's a bunch of ladies making some stuff up. We need to go see for ourselves. And so Peter did. He, he arose and he went quickly, ran, stooped in and looked at the tomb and saw the linen cloth that Jesus' body had been wrapped in. And what is it said that he, he marveled? Folks, the... The Christian faith, the faith that we practice as followers of Jesus Christ, really hinges on this reality, the empty tomb, right? If Jesus is dead and he had been buried and his body had decomp decomposed just like any other body, then our faith would be in vain. But he died on the cross, and just as he predicted, because he is God, on the third day he rose again.
He is not here. He is risen. Praise the Lord. I'm going to pray and um, conclude our time here this morning at our sunrise service. And then I'll see you again uh, later this morning for our Easter sermon. Where I'm going to uh, unpack some of these things even further. Father, we thank you again for this glorious, beautiful morning. We thank you for the reality that our faith is not grounded in a belief that is fantasy, uh, made up, but it's grounded in the hard reality, the fact that on that third day when these ladies and later Peter came to witness what had gone on in that tomb, that it was, it was empty. Father, thank you so much for giving us uh, such a beautiful reality to hang our, our, our faith on. Father, please bless this day. Uh, help us to just glory in the reality uh, that our lives are secure in the finished work of Jesus Christ on the cross. His death, His burial, and wonderfully, miraculously, amazingly, His resurrection. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you. Have a great and beautiful Easter morning. The sun is rising. He is risen.